One thing Six Flags is well known for is their abundance of thrill rides based on DC Comics characters. This all started back in 1984 when the company acquired Marriott's Great America in Gurney, Illinois. This gave Six Flags the right to not only use the park's pre-existing Looney Tunes characters, but other Warner Brothers licenses as well. This of course included the many heroes and villains of the DC Comics universe. Since then, Six Flags has continued adding DC-themed attractions to their parks. Though Six Flags was was once owned by Time Warner, the company now has to pay a licensing fee to use its characters. Nevertheless, the DC brand gives extra marketability to new, exciting attractions, as we see in every year's announcements. Even some already existing rides have been rethemed to the franchise to give them extra audience appeal. While most of the chain's DC-themed attractions are still in operation, one ride in particular was infamous for how hard it flopped. Back in 1996, Warner Brothers was gearing up to release Batman and Robin, the second film in a campier reboot of the Batman franchise. In order to promote the film's release, three new Batman and Robin themed attractions were planned to open in the Six Flags chain. The company decided to go with fledgling manufacturer Premier Rides for these attractions. Premier had previously built indoor roller coaster Runaway Mountain for Six Flags over Texas, as well as indoor launch coaster Flight of Fear at both Kings Island and Kings Dominion. Likely impressed with their launch coasters, Six Flags hired Premier to build three more of them. Later that year, these new Batman and Robin themed coasters were announced. These were Mr. Freeze at both Six Flags Over Texas and Missouri Six Flags St. Louis, and of course, Batman and Robin the Chiller at New Jersey's Six Flags Great Adventure. Each ride would be a shuttle coaster, using a revolutionary electromagnetic launch system to send riders through the course. This launch system is known as LIM, which stands for Linear Induction Motor. These coasters were all scheduled to open for the 1997 season to coincide with the movie's release that June. June. Unfortunately, due to mechanical issues with the launch system, both Mr. Freeze coasters would be delayed to 1998. Though the Chiller did open in 1997, it would be far from a successful debut. Construction of the Chiller began in early 1997 with supports going up in April that year. Also under construction was an elaborate ride station themed to the film's Gotham Observatory. The ride's queue line was a massive industrial-style building themed to Mr. Freeze's generator. The plot of the ride was that Batman and Robin themselves were launching an attack on the villainous Mr. Freeze before pulling back and returning to base, thus explaining the shuttle coaster element. Soon enough, the coaster had completed construction, and technicians tested the ride constantly for its proposed opening in June. Unfortunately, things were about to go downhill very quickly. On June 7, 1997, Batman and Robin the Chiller opened to the public. To celebrate its opening day, the park held a unique ribbon-cutting ceremony. In honor of the dynamic duo of Batman and Robin, and the ride's dueling nature, Six Flags invited sets of twins to cut the ribbon and take the inaugural rides. On the surface, this ride seemed like a bona fide hit in the making. Guests would be able to race each other on two separate tracks, and it overall looked like a revolutionary attraction that would take the park by storm. The ride started off in the station, with passengers boarding either the blue Batman side or the red Robin side. Both coasters would then launch guests at 65 miles per hour, sending them through each course. The Batman side started off with a tall inverting top hat, while the Robin side featured a massive cobra roll. After each of the track's signature elements, both trains would traverse zero-g rolls before reaching the end of the initial layout. Another set of LIM launch mechanisms were included on each track, pulling the trains forward before launching them backwards. This ensured that the trains would gain enough momentum to complete each circuit, as the trains wouldn't have made it back to the station on gravity alone. After the second launch, the trains would maneuver their respective layouts backwards before re-entering the station. It sounded like an amazingly unique shuttle coaster experience, but not everything went according to plan. Shortly after its grand opening, the ride would face extended downtime, and several mechanical problems kept it from running properly. First of all, the dual LIM launch system on each track used a lot of electricity. If both trains were launched simultaneously, the ride was likely to cause a power shortage. This caused brownouts not only inside the park, but in nearby neighborhoods as well. Because of this, the ride was prevented from launching both tracks simultaneously. Ride operators reportedly had to wait until the first train cleared the launch before sending the other one. This led to uneven and erratic launches that took away from the ride's dueling nature. 
and most of the time the ride wouldn't duel at all and only one track would launch at a time. Even without launching in unison, the LIMs were still extremely flawed, and would even smoke up from overheating every now and then. It was only a few weeks into the 1997 season before the chiller would close for the rest of the year, which greatly disappointed park goers. Park management wasn't happy about this either. Not only was their newest major investment not functional, but it couldn't even do like it was intended. Nevertheless, the ride was rescheduled to open in 1998, and Six Flags hoped the ride would finally have a decent run at the park. While it was more reliable that year, it was still nothing short of a maintenance nightmare. During its run at the park, the ride faced long stretches of extended downtime as the launch mechanics were repaired and replaced. Generally, the Batman side had more downtime than the Robin side. This was due to parts from the Batman side being used to replace parts on the Robin side. This made the Batman side an especially rare credit as it barely operated throughout its run. In fact, it sat standing but not operating for an entire season while only running for two or three weeks in other seasons. Moreover, both sides had issues with saddling. Saddling occurs when the trains don't have enough momentum to complete the circuit and get stuck in a low area of the track. The trains would often get stuck before the zero-g rolls, and Robin's train would occasionally stall inside the Cobra roll. This would commonly happen during power shortages or cold weather, and the trains would have to be taken off the track with a crane before the ride could reopen. As if that wasn't bad enough, those who did get to ride it often complained that the over-the-shoulder restraints led to a rough and painful ride experience, and headaches were a common complaint among guests. Guests wearing earrings were subjected to even more pain, and some would even come off the ride with bloody ears. This issue in particular led to the park implementing a strict no-earrings policy on the ride. To the park's credit though, officials made considerable efforts to remedy these issues. After an initial attempt to modify the restraints with softer padding, the park eventually installed lap bars on the Robin side in 2001 and on the Batman side in 2002. Many enthusiasts have claimed that the ride was much more exciting and tolerable with these new restraints. They would also attempt to fix the issue of the ride getting stuck by removing its zero-g rolls for the 2007 season. This was meant to keep the trains from losing momentum on the versions and complete the course. Six Flags did everything they could to get the ride to be fully operational. Sadly though, despite the many attempted improvements, the ride just couldn't be salvaged. Coincidentally, the same could be said about the movie that inspired it, which was utterly destroyed by critics and declared a box office disaster. After years of constant downtime, maintenance issues, and disappointed guests, the chiller was declared to be far too expensive and complicated to fix. So during the 2007 season, the decision was was made to permanently remove the ride from the park's lineup. The removal began that year, and by 2008, the track was all gone. Surprisingly enough, the ride itself was not sent to the scrapyard. Instead, it was actually sold to a Brazilian theme park named Beto Carrero World. But don't expect this ride to open anytime soon. The coaster was never actually built at the park. It's unknown why it was moved there in the first place, but there are two common theories. The first theory is that Beto Carrero World bought the ride for its cheap price, but didn't consider the extreme maintenance costs and the issues it had at Great Adventure. Another more comical theory is that the park actually lost the ride's blueprints, making it impossible to be rebuilt. Either way, it's insanely unlikely that this coaster will ever run again. Back in New Jersey, the ride's space at Great Adventure has since been reused for the Justice League Battle for Metropolis Dark Ride. While the queue line was torn down in 2016, the ride's observatory is still standing to this day, now labeled as the Lena Luther Exploratorium. It remains the only remnant of this once mighty attraction. As for Premier Rides, while the failure of this coaster was sure to be painful for the company, they still managed to persevere. Premier has since become a widely respected manufacturer of launch coasters, with their compact Skyrocket 2 model becoming a bona fide hit with parks both large and small. Next year, they'll even be opening a spiritual successor to the chiller at Six Flags Magic Mountain. This new ride called West Coast Racers will also be a launch dueling coaster, though with a continuous layout instead of two separate tracks. Fortunately, this coaster will likely be much more reliable than the Chiller ever was, and the Chiller will remain one of the biggest failures in roller coaster history. Before I wrap things up, I'd like to announce the return of the weekly poll. I'll be kicking off this new one by asking you what is the most impressive coaster that Mock Rides has ever created. I have all of their extreme thrill level coasters included, so feel free to head on down to ThemeParkCrazy.com 
gmail.com and cast your vote. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. You can follow me on social media on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, or you can check out my website at themeparkcrazy.com. This is Theme Park Crazy, and I'll see you all next time.